Hello, everybody. Welcome back to American Truck Simulator once again. Today, we are checking out one of the best payware trucks I have ever driven, and it is the Blue Line Modding Peterbilt 379. Now, this is by Brandon Moffitt. I will have a link to his Facebook page in the description below. We're going to talk about this truck on our journey to go pick up some flour here in Denver, Colorado. We're going to go south down to Raton, New Mexico to deliver. Now, I will preface this and say that this truck is 70 US dollars. Yes, yeah, seven zero. Uh, however, there is a reason for that, and we're going to explain it now. Let's get started. First things first, let's fire up the engine so you can listen to this cat C18 roar. It has 800 horsepower in it, and we're running a 336 as far as the uh, ratio for our transmission. It's an 18 speed Eaton Fuller. And go ahead and fire it up here. Oh yeah, turn those lights on. Look at all the lighting we got on this bad boy. As far as the trailer, we are using the John Ruta Great Dane, the one I use all the time. It is a payware trailer as well, and I will have John's link in the description if you wanna go check it out. And here we are in the truck, and a very happy Sunday to all of you. I hope you guys had a great weekend and are enjoying the last of what we have here. Look at the back of this thing, and I will tell you this. If you stay tuned to the end of the video, we're going to go through all the customization options there are, and then I will show you the mods I'm using, as well as the settings I use for American Truck Simulator. So you don't want to miss that. Stick around to the end. Left side mirror is good. Right side mirror is good. We're going to push that parking brake in, and we are going to get rolling here and roll the windows down because the engine on this thing sounds so good. I love the Jake brake on it as well. So let's get her rolling. Now I chose the 800 horsepower option of this truck because I had a Cat C18 with like 1200 horsepower. It was just a little over the top, man. It was like a drag uh, car whenever you would take off in a straight line. So we're gonna take it easy here. Got the motion platform on. Big thanks to Next Level Racing for my rig as always. If you wanna see what I'm using, it will always be linked in the description below and you can check it out there. We're making a right turn out of here. So let's take our time doing that, shall we? Yes, we will. So I know what you're saying. $70 seems like a lot, but there is so much that has been brought to the table with this truck. I can't even scratch the surface, okay? 200 exterior options, 300 on the interior. You're never going to have the same truck as another guy. Like you just, I mean, you could accidentally, one in a million, but more than likely that's not gonna be the case and high quality stuff, man. The engine and the uh, transmissions themselves, those have been worked on for the past four years of his life. That's a pretty long time. Since American Truck Simulator was released, that's whenever Brandon started messing with those. Right. Apart from that, right. yeah, we have to go way out to get our trailer out here. We got that split axle too. Yep, we're gonna hit on this curb here, try not to take their mailbox out, but we'll be all right. Hey, you know what? They chose they wanted to live across from a trucking yard, so. <laughs> we will be floating our gears, of course. Get on the highway right here. And we are gonna be smooth sailing here. Get around this guy, no problem. Watching our mirrors all the way to this side. Oh, wonderful. Listen to this engine. Floating those gears. We have some row construction up here, it looks like, right out of the gate. That's all right, we're sticking to this lane for now anyway because we're getting off the highway immediately, unless this lane ends, but I don't think it does anytime soon. Nope, looks like we're going to be getting off here at Chambers Road. Chambers Road, there's one of those in St. Louis, actually. Used to go down all the time. Growing up in St. Louis, man, in Riverview. If you're from St. Louis, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you aren't from St. Louis, you'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about, Jeff. Listen to this Jake. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love it so much. I do, I do. So I will also tell you that this truck is $70. Now, I did not pay for this truck. It was sent to me. However, I'm gonna let you know this. Hold on, don't get, don't get upset with me now, come on. Don't get upset with me now. 
uh, he was like, hey, I will give you this truck if you just do a video on it on YouTube. And I'll we're going to talk about his backstory and things because I did talk to him a very long time before I agreed to do this stuff. And I ended up buying this truck for the Northern Alex so he could use it. And I also uh, will be giving one away on my Twitch stream. So I'm, I'm, I bought the truck a couple times already and it will be worth it. So I am in fact, not only buying the truck, but I'm buying it twice. But when I drove this truck, I was like, the Northern Alex has to own this. <laughs> he's gotta have it, he will love this truck. And I was correct because he's been driving it like crazy. Now I know you can skip gears, like see we're in second now, we skip all the way over to fourth. There we go, and then we'll skip up into sixth gear here because we have just that much engine power that we don't even need to use with a empty trailer right now. Slow down, we're making a left turn right here and we're picking up at this distribution center right over here, I believe. I do believe. All right, all the way in this lane, we're gonna be sticking out just a little bit, but that's all right. And we can launch in second gear actually, which we're going to do, so we have the green. Skip that gear, just kind of hold out right here. All the way around, give ourselves room. Now we're gonna make a left turn right here. It's at UPS we're picking up. I believe it's Flower going to Raton, Flower. Let's see if that's the case. Yeah, this is our yard we're picking up at. We're gonna wait and see what our options are as far as traffic coming towards us. And we will do a pre-trip inspection because I wanna show you the quality of the truck, of course. I think this will be a pretty straightforward, we got this one. Sorry, car. You can just kind of wait there, buddy. Skip that gear too. All right, we are here. Let's go ahead and check in with the boss and see where they want us to pick up at. It's a little further in, it looks like. Very cool, realistic yard, actually, this one is. Where's our white X? I think it's up here. That's what we're looking for. Straight ahead, yep, I see it right here. Okay, this looks like the office right here on the right. We're gonna check in and we'll find out what they want us to do. And here it is, Flower, 48,589 pounds going to Raton, New Mexico at the Walmart there. Hopefully it's not gonna be that Walgreens Walmart, but uh, probably will be. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take that job. The cargo's ready to be loaded and I talked to them, they're going to have us back in right here to the right, so. Kind of a blind back, but we're not gonna be doing a blind back. We're gonna come down here, do a U-turn, and then we'll have a nice setup right there into that dock is where we're going. So that is the plan of action. Let's get it going here. Into third gear for now, I'm just gonna hold it. Yeah, there's plenty of room back here to turn around. And we have an empty trailer, so we're not worried about that. So we're looking about almost 50,000 pounds of weight here going into our trailer, so we weren't gonna be super, super heavy here today, which will be nice. I don't know what's going on with those FedEx vans, but I know they're messed up. Their textures are all screwed up. Not that that matters anyway, because we're picking up here at UPS. All right, so we're picking up right here by, the, of course, by the forklift. And we're just gonna kind of ollie dock this in here. I don't think we can have enough room to straight back. We might be able to straight back right here, actually. Let's try a straight back. Let's see if we can do it. Let's see if our skills are with a straight back today. I just don't know about it, but we're gonna try. All the way to the right. Down, shift that guy all the way out. Come on, baby. I'm coming this way. And let's see if we got even close. I don't know if we did. Almost there. Oh, I think we did it. <laughs> I think we did it. I mean, pretty close at least. Just come on back this way. And then this way. I think we are, were able to straight back this one, which is great because I'm sure, yep, there we are. I mean, we, we were kind of there, but not, not great. A little bit more earlier, we would have had it nailed, I think. But hey, I digress. I will take it. I'll take the win, especially with the split axle. There we go. Like that. Now we'll cut it all the way over to the right here and kind of walk her back to the dock. 
I might have to pull up a little bit to the right. Yeah, we're a little bit to the left. That's okay, though. I'm going to pull the trailer this way and then straighten it out. And then straighten it out that way. There we go. Much better. Much better position. Yep, that will work for us. Just got to be able to see our lines here. And we're on the lines. I want to try to bump the dock. That would be really cool. Sometimes they let you bump the dock. Sometimes they don't, you know. This is pretty straight on right here. This is where we want to be. I'm very happy with that back. We didn't nail it on the first try, of course, but still. We'll wait for it to turn green, and then we know we need to start really slowing down so we can bump the dock nice and easy. Keep on coming, buddy. Keep on coming. Now, before we get out and move around the truck, you must have the console enabled. Google how to enable the console in America Truck Sim, the tilde key, and then you... Um, all you have to do is just hit uh, the... Oh, we hit the bump. Yep, we bumped the dock right there. Awesome. Pull that, baby. And then you just hit the zero key and then numpad to move around and mouse wheel to slow or uh, to go faster or slow down. I'm pretty happy with that. We're right on the white line right there, right in the door. That's where we needed to be. Perfect. And it will be done around noon-ish. Yep, 12.03. Let's do our pre-trip. Park and break in. Let's pull it away from the dock a little bit here. That'll be perfect right there. Let's make sure everything's good to go. Flash your lights are on. Get those headlights on as well. All right, starting at the front, we can see we have two working headlights. High beams work fine. And we have our amber lights all looking good. Nothing is cracked or broken. It is the correct color. That's what it should be. Moving around to the right side of the truck, everything is looking good here. We have the fuel tank straps looking good. We got the side lights all working and none are cracked or broken. They are the right color. Uh, everything that looks good here. You have the antennas attached. Moving back here to the trailer, we have this beautiful Thermo King. And 35 degrees in there right now is what we have it set at. Looking at the lines, everything's hooked up. We have our uh, brake lines all good to go. Electrical's good to go. And uh, nothing is uh, messed up there. It all looks well and good. All the lights back here, the red ones, are the right color. They're not cracked or broken. Moving on. We've got underneath here, we're gonna look and check. Uh, locking jaws are good, yep. The fifth wheel looks great. We have the landing gear up. Nothing is wrong with the landing gear, it looks good. The tail lights are working. They are the right color, they're not cracked or broken. They're good to go there. All the side lights are good in working order. Underneath there it is as well. Moving down the line, we have the toolbox is closed and locked, everything looks good. All the lights across here are great to the back of the trailer. We see all the lights here are working fine. They are the correct color. They're not cracked or broken. Same thing up there. Looking great. And the tires are good. And our uh, tandems are fantastic. And all of this is closed up. Looking great. We're just kind of doing our own little pre-trip. Nothing too intense uh, compared to what you would see in the real world. Keep that in mind. So moving towards the front. Everything looks good here. Wheels are good. Tires are good. I say we are pretty darn fantastic here. The uh, toolbox is locked away. Everything's good there. And then moving around back to the right-hand side, the mirrors are all good there. Antennas are there. And we are done. All right, push that bad boy in. We're going to go ahead and put it in gear. Flashers off. And let's get out of here. Let's get going to Raton, New Mexico today. That's what we're going to be doing. We get our lights off as well. We're going to need those on. No siree, Bob. Oh, we can keep the secondary lights on. I, I do like that. There we go. All clear there. Yep. Clear of that area. I put this thing into gear, and we're going to get going down the highway. So, what I was going to say about everything is, you know, a $70 add-on like this, you have a person that, you know, spent so much time on it. You know, like I was saying, the transmission and the engine alone was being worked on for the past four years but the truck itself for for two years and so what happened was he didn't really have any plans to you know go pay wear or anything like that so much but when COVID happened it gave an opportunity for him to sit at home because he did not have any work at the time he's kind of screwed so he put his life into this truck and was like well i'm gonna sell it you know and the amount of work and dedication and detail in this truck, 
you can see it. It's not one of those trucks that you're like, ah, you know? Because with uh, the Dom's Peterbilt 379, it's like, I don't, I don't know if I could recommend that one because it needs a lot of work still. Now, maybe down the road, it'll be great, but I couldn't really recommend it a thousand percent. This one, I'm telling you what, I equate it to like the PMDG of American Truck Simulator. If you don't know what that is, like in Flight Simulator, they're known for their mods and they're expensive mods, but they're very, very, very well done. And this is kind of like that. Like, honestly, we're gonna stick to this left lane because we're gonna have to get on the highway this way. I'm not using any traffic mods. I'm only using a G traffic setting of three. This is what I'm using today. I took out the traffic mod. It was causing a lot of issues as far as backups go in traffic. And, and here we are in traffic again. But a lot of this has to do with the design of the towns, you know? There's not enough road here to flow all the traffic out. Instead, you get big, huge backups like this because of that, which is okay. Kind of realistic. It is lunch hour. Or it's a round lunch time for a lot of people here. Just kind of roll it this way. And that's okay. We can listen to how beautiful this truck is. All of these switches in here are all modeled. And I mean, you just, you've got a uh, interior light in here. I could turn on with the uh, beacon light at night and it would turn it red in here. Actually, I might be able to show you right here where we're stopped. If I turn that on, looking at this truck from the outside, it is gorgeous, man. Absolutely beautiful. Get through this light here, but man, oh man, what a truck. What a truck. <laughs> and we'll pull up right behind this guy. No problemo. We're getting on 70. We're going west, it looks like. So we're going to get on west 70, and then we'll get on 25 and take that south. I think that's the route we're going to be taking today. Pretty sure. And there's our green light. Sweet. Let's start this journey. Well, we have one more light to get through, and then we'll be okay. I'm going to go through my gears. I'm not going to split my bottom gears, of course, but we'll split the upper gears when we get on the highway, just so you can listen to the engine go through all of its paces. So we're not going to be skipping any gears for the most part. Not into fourth, third, and I like to keep it in first right here at the light, just because. Oh, man, that car sounds good. Waiting for our green light. I know I'm the king of sitting at green lights, so I'm going to try to not do that today. Looks like an ambulance there. I think it was. All right, let's get through our gears and listen to this sucker roar to life as we get on the highway. Just like that, we are at 50 miles an hour. Get over in the left lane here. I don't think we're getting off the highway anytime soon. No. And that's all there is to it. To get up to speed here, uh, 65 through here. We'll get up to speed, no problem. But we're gonna be getting off uh, on 25 here, so I don't need to get really, really fast here, but I wanna listen to these jakes come to life. So we'll drop this sucker down like this. Listen to that. Stick to South 25. And you got that sound of that choppy Jake break, man. I love it so much. And look at the difference of how it behaves. We're on the low Jakes too, you know? You can actually use it correctly in a sense like this because it's not super 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 overpowered and that's one thing he said that he worked on with not just you know how the engine rpms don't drop like a rock anymore the fact of the matter you know when you're using your jakes it's so overpowered in american truck simulator now you can turn them down but they're still overpowered and he worked on making that much more realistic. So when you're going down a steep grade, like you'll see today, possibly, we get towards Raton on a hill, 
you can just ride the Jake down like you would in real life. And then you can adjust what level of the Jakes you're using. And when I say Jake brake, I'm talking about, you know, a Jacob's brake. It's an engine brake. It's a style of engine brake, but in the U.S., a lot of uh, truck drivers just call it the Jake brake. That's what I'm talking about. But it's an engine brake. All right, 55 through here. We're just going to kind of hang out here in 8 low. I'm not in 8 high or anything like that. We got plenty of fuel for this trip so far, so we're just going to stick to this lane here. There is the stadium. We're coming up here on the right-hand side. Beautiful day in Denver, Colorado, that's for certain. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, when I'm driving this truck, I like to have my little hood ornament there right on the white line. Usually, if I keep it right there on the white line, I am in my lane perfectly fine. That's where I like to hang out. We're going to get over in this lane here before it ends. Because we are definitely not going there. So we're going to maintain this 55 here. We can use our Jake brake when we want to so I can actually keep it on just so we have it when we're ready. So I have my next level uh, rig. It's the GT track. I have the Motion Platform V3, so that's the reason why you see my chair moving and me moving around in this thing. If I go like this, you'll see it move around a little bit there. So I am on a Motion Platform. It's a seat mover, but still a Motion Platform nonetheless. 65 through here, all right. We can open her up now. We're just gonna keep these windows down because it's just such a great sound and engine. It truly is. But yeah, if I had a higher gear ratio, it would be at a much higher RPM. And I'm an eight low right now at 1500, which isn't bad at all. I am gonna get me a screenshot. I will be right back. And we are back in action, almost to Fillmore Street here. I'll turn off our jig, we don't need that on right now to get up into eight high here so we can just cruise there we go eight high so now we're at about you know 12 1300 rpm at 60 miles an hour that's where you want to be right there i've had a more aggressive i had a 350 in it and it just uh was sucking gas and was a much higher rpm when i was in my last gear simmering street man i have been to colorado springs before and i have been on simmering street I've been on this exact stretch of highway, which was so cool because when I went, I was like, I know this. When or whenever this, you know, like whenever this came out for American Truck Simulator, I was like, I know this. I had a, I had a flip turned on us there. I did indeed. Okay, slow down here. Watching out. Yesterday we went to a Ren Fair in Florida. I had never been to a, well, I've been to a Ren Fair when I was very, very young because back in the day in the nineties, Ooh, trucks need to get on the highway. We're going to get over here, buddy. Let you on. We're, we're all clear. All clear back. Have our, have at her. Okay. Some Jack wagon tries to get around us on the right, which they're not. They're good. So I went to the Ren Fair and like I said, I haven't been to one since I was a kid, but back when we were younger, we, we basically, my parents at the time, my mom and my uh, stepdad at the time, they were living off of garage sailing. You ever been garage sailing before? Well, that's what we used to do. So we have to get up early mornings on the weekends, go out, buy stuff, and then resell it. They had like a trading shop there for a while, but they would also have garage sales of their own and just kind of, you know, recycle and repeat. But the reason why I say the rent fairs is because we would go to rent fairs and sell there as well. Flea markets. Uh, that was all down in Springfield, Missouri. And that was the first time I had ever seen a Civil War reenactment, which was really, really cool to see in person. So I do have that memory out of all of it. But, you know, that I'm going on a tangent about. Went to the Ren Fair, and as an adult, I really enjoyed it. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm a nerdy person, so going to go see something like that was awesome. And it was really well done. It was all outdoors, you know. People were being safe about everything. It was it was nice. I was very, very impressed with it. 
and I plan to go back. So they're in town for a couple weeks. So if those of you uh, that like Ren Fairs, there's one in the Tampa area. It's a big one. I forget the name of the actual location of it. It's way out there. It's north of Tampa to the east. Yep, staying right here on this on this road. Get her back up to 65 here. But I will be going there, I believe, on the 9th. So that will be fun. There we go. Look at that. 70 miles an hour. Throw that Jake on. He's hitting the brakes. We're in a 55 zone, but that's all right. Now we can turn up the Jakes to high. Look at that. That was much better. So I had him on low Jake, and then I, you have the medium or the high setting, which we had it on high there. So it slowed down a lot quicker, which was really nice. Oh, this guy, he's beating us. He's going a little faster than us. No fair, dude. Though we're an op owner operator, we could go a lot faster if we wanted to. Okay, what we got here? This guy's got slam brakes, I have a feeling. Yep. I was waiting for that, man. I was waiting for that. I would let you on the highway truck, but it's just not going to happen, man. That's American Truck Sim AI for you there. They still don't have merges down at all. You just get trucks that just sit there, and then sometimes they'll pull out in front of you at like three miles an hour. So you got to be ready for that, too. Love the Colorado DLC. It is so damn good, man. So damn good. Not using any graphics mod, just using defaults. Little ATS 140. They really, really raised the bar as far as graphics go with this new version of the truck. Of the truck. Of the sim. <laughs> I also have, speaking of sims, with the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, I have a new airplane I'm going to be showcase in the p40 warhawk that will be a fun video so look forward to that this week there we go get through our gears here get back up to speed now we're going to be getting into the mountains just a little bit but i was looking forward to that anyway nobody's coming we're getting over i don't trust this guy he's not merging it's a police officer oh, 75 through here we're all right keep right I know, I would, trust me. I want to keep a little bit of speed for this hill, but not so much we can't make the turn. Because we're pretty lightly loaded. Like, it's not that bad compared to some other drivers out here, so we're fine. But remember, what goes up must come down. So we're going to get to use that Jake brake, I have a feeling, which will be awesome. A slight turn to the right, nothing too crazy here. All right, truck, I'm coming on over. Beautiful. Now we're back in eight high, which I think we're gonna be going down the mountain here. It's not really much of a mountain, but it's a hill for certain. Yeah, this car's going a lot quicker than we are. We're gonna drop it down into here. We're gonna drop it into a lower gear of seventh. Now we're gonna use this Jake brake here in a second. Well, looks like we're going to be stuck behind a dump truck. We're just going really super slow. And that school bus, too. So, nothing too crazy here. Drop it into seven high. Actually, we might be doing that here in a minute. Um, yeah, I'll wait till after this turn. Keep it in seven high for now. This, these dump trucks go so slow. Trinidad, next exit. We're getting close to our destination. All right, there goes the wrecker. Elevation 6107. Yeah, I'm gonna get in the left lane here because this dump truck is slowing us down, man. Go. Eat low. Starkville, three quarter mile. Yeah, it wasn't much of a mountain to go down, I guess. I think it's when we get closer to Raton it does that. If memory serves correct. 
65 through here. Drop it into 8 high. And we get back over. So beautiful, man. This whole drive right here is so good. Alright, what's traffic doing? Merging to death? Yep, they're going to merge to their deaths. We're going to get in the left lane for it. We're going to have to get off of this way station, I bet you. Nope, we have to bypass it. Aha, yes. Love it when that happens. All right, well, get on this hill. Welcome to New Mexico, everybody. The land of enchantment. So let's go to a lower Jake setting there and look, let go. We're just gonna Jake down this hill. That's about as realistic as it gets right there. And look at the RPM not dropping really heavy on low jakes. That is how you jake break down a hill. Realistically. You can't do that with the default trucks, unfortunately. They just, it slows down too much and then you gotta get out of the jake break when you're going down a hill. Oh, here we go, here we go. Here we go, this is what I'm talking about, slammingbrakes.com. Gotta love it, dude. Wow. Just wow. What are you doing? No, I'm in the up. I was in fifth gear. Come on. You just got to be ready for it, man. That's every single time. Turn that Jake off. Don't need it as we're getting through our gears. Now I'm going to skip all the way to eighth here. Watch. Right there. I didn't need to go through all my gears here, and we're behind this guy that's rider that's going a little slow. We're getting off the highway anyway, so screw it, right? Slow on down. I'm gonna actually float this one down. Out of habit, I use my. There we go. Use my clutch. We have made it 87. Raton, yep, uh, that's what we want right there. I usually use the clutch when I'm downshifting, especially in these lower gears like this. But if I'm on the highway, you can float it down, no problem. I guess he's gonna let us go. All right, cool. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Watch that side there. We we're I knew we were gonna get in the grass a little bit there, but I didn't want to hit that. That fire truck. We are dropping off here at this Walmart. I really hope it's not the Walmart I think it is. I really hope it's not a Walgreens drop, man. That's all I've been getting lately. Every time I want a distribution center or something bigger. Don't get me wrong, I don't mind the challenge. It's just, you know, it gets old when you do it over and over again. It looks like it's not going to be that one, but oh, it is. <laughs> it 100% is. Oh my God, dude. I cannot get away from this stupid drop. My least favorite drop in the game. Well, we know what to do. We have to straddle the lane here. We have to wait for all the traffic to pass here so we can even get into this damn place. This is the worst. All right, we're going to try something here. Okay, that van, you better not cut me off, buddy. Because I have to go all the way left to get into this place. What are you doing? What did we hit? Is there an invisible wall here? What in the hell is that? Are you kidding me? What in the hell is that? Can we go in the middle here? There's something... a Whoa, what? Okay, let's look. There's nothing here. There's nothing here. And we're hitting something in front of us. It won't let me go. Swing wide for this. If that's the case, I have to go down and turn around. I, Dude, I don't get this one at all. Watch, I'm going to put this thing in gear here. Back it up. Yeah, shut up. Honking back there at me. Yeah, if I go forward here, watch. Yeah. 
What is that about? SCS, what is that about? Holy cow, you have got to be kidding me, dude. We might have to cheat this one. Can we even go straight at all here? Or they shut this road off? No, you can't even get through. I went ahead and cheated. I had to put ourselves in here. I don't know why we couldn't get in there. That was ridiculous, man. Absolutely ridiculous. That's all right. We've done this one so many times. Who cares, you know, at this point? I don't know what that was about, though. <laughs> that's that's a new one for me. All right, we're going to start going this way. At least there's not a lot of cars here today, which is nice. There's still some there to annoy you, but we're used to that anyway. Keep coming back. I want to hit this person's Cadillac here. Let's keep it coming back, dude. We're good. Looking good, looking good. Get that all the way to the side here. Once we get clear of this Cadillac, we should be in good shape. It's not a Cadillac, is it? Is it a Nissan? Nissan? Oh, man, we screwed that up big time. Because that damn car's there. All right. I know what I got to do. Let's pull up. We have to make this shallower of a turn. Which is annoying, I know, but... Mm. That damn car wasn't there, it wouldn't be so bad. I have to get a little closer to the car than I want to. But we, we're in a better spot now. Yep. You be coming back, buddy. All right. Now we can crank it all the way this way. No car over here to the right. Traffic being real stupid. All right. We're going to stop here once we get this straight. And we're going to go ahead and open the doors and check out where they want this thing. It looks like they want us on that far, far side out there next to the fence. Okay. We can do that. Let's open up our doors and get it done. All right, keep on coming back. We'll just go nice and easy on this one. Doesn't need to be crazy by any means. Would have liked to be a little further to our right, but that's okay. Once we get this thing in there, it'll be all right. And it's a split axle, so it's like having your tandems all the way in the back as far as turning goes. So we'll get a little bit further out this way. And we'll be in better shape. All right, let's start cutting it this way. Let's kind of fade it into that spot is what I want to do. It's actually turning pretty good right there. A little bit more. Once we get that second one on there, we'll start bringing our truck around here. Get on that line a little bit more. There we go. Let's try that. We should be in decent shape here so it won't be turning too sharp for us. Let's watch it here. That fence comes up real fast. And not to mention that we're going to be right on the line of the curb. We're still in a good spot here. Well, we're going to have to pull up a little bit here to the right. And that's all. Go back this way. Yeah, kind of Austin powers it just a little bit here. <laughs> Forward to the right. All right, there. Back. Now we can see over on that side. That's a good spot right about there. Now we'll crank it back this way. It's looking good there. Straighten it out. That's on the line right there. It's just a little bit to the right. Hey, we might fix it right here. Yeah, they liked it. That's okay. We'll take it. That'll work for me right there. Nice and straight. Beautiful. Shut those flashes off and shut the engine off. We got a excellent 241 miles, 6 hours, 32 minutes, 39.7 gallons of fuel consumed. Let's start with the options really fast. I'm going to show you what I have as far as graphics options go right here brightness in there 25 60 by 14 40 default refresh rate moving down 400 percent scaling high on the anti-aliasing ssao on low depth of field is off sun shafts on color correction off reflection scaling 100 high 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 ultra medium high medium high as far as all that goes anisotropic filtering all the way up all these are selected here especially secondary vehicle lights 
Light visibility range is on high and pedestrians are turned on. And here we are in the mod manager. I'm just going to show you right here on the right hand side. You can pause the video. You can take a screenshot, whatever you want to do. This is everything that I am currently using right here. A lot of stuff on the Steam Workshop. Some other things are not. There is one that's important, the icons. That's how I get the white lines on the ground. No boundaries, so you don't get those X's, which might have helped us today because that might have been a boundary there, which I don't understand why they would have us turn in there unless they had us go a different way, but the GPS had us go that way, so I don't know, man. Realistic truck physics mod right there by FRKN64. Uh, engine sound packs, there they are right there by Creech Bomb. We have Rabinicus as well. Uh, real advertisements, real realistic corner shop, gas stations, revival project, all of these. You're going to find those on uh, Grimes stuff, but that is in the SCS forums if you want to see that. Real companies, shops, and billboards. Municipal police traffic pack. There's our AI traffic pack. I need to update that. It's still out of date. Here's the other stuff here. Uh, I'll call wheels and stuff like that. Going on down, going on down. Payware, John Ruta stuff there. Now, you don't want to, if you have DOMS 379 and you want to get this blue line 379, don't run them at the same time. They use the same name. So you can't run them both at the same time. Keep that in mind. So coming down here to the bottom, here's all our other stuff for Great America map, Midwest expansion, coast to coast, skin pack for the 379, the key for the 379. This is the order it goes the skin pack, the key, then the patch that was out recently. And then the Peterbilt 379 itself. Let's go ahead and build it. Well, we'll show you all the customization options there are on the truck. And here is the Blue Line 379. All your options here. You have a bunch of options. Now, the 72 or 73 inch sleeper is something that is still coming down the line he's working on. But currently, you have a 48 inch Unibilt uh, stand up sleeper. You've got the mid sleeper as a 63 48 63 these are all the different ones the flat top options as well you can change all those out we have the unit built sleeper here the 63 but if you want to have that flat top you can throw that on there and there you are right there as far as chassis go you have a six by four you got a six uh, by four 265 wb you have some options here you can really stretch that frame where you can have some heavy duty options as well here's all the painted versions of those so if you wanted to you could do that easily. Engine options, here they all are, and there are a lot of them. There are a lot of options with the Rabinicus engines and the Creech Bomb engines. All this stuff is here. There's so many to choose from. I can't even begin to show you what there is. There's just so much here. Uh, today's video was using the Cat C18 800 straight pipe. I love that sound. That's the one I wanted to use. Moving into transmissions, there's what we were using an 18 speed. Uh, Eaton Fuller, 3.36. Now, I've done a 3.50. Like I said, that's going to be a higher gear ratio, or it's going to be a higher RPM when you're in your final gear. And you can even go up to a 3.70 and into three, or all the way up to a 4.10. So that's just the 18 speeds. And then there's options for the Ultra Shift there. You have some options up here as well. The Ultra Shift, I believe that is a separate mod that I'm currently using. I don't think that that is with this truck. As you can see, all the Eaton Fuller options are right here. And there are quite a few to choose from. Interior. Okay, so this Peterbilt 379 is from 1986 all the way up until today, or the newer ones of 2006 and uh, beyond. So you have an 86 2000 model year flat top. You have the custom, so you have those right there. And then you have this one here, which is your newer version and the flat top custom as well. So you're seeing those different switches, but you can have a newer one for sure. And don't worry about that. You can see... That's missing. I'm going to show you the reason why that's missing there. But these are the options you start with. You have this one, this one, this one, or this one. And things are going to be transparent when you're going through it. But we'll get to that in a second. Paint jobs, tons. With that skin pack that he gives you, man, there's so many paint jobs that I can't even begin to show them all. Like, there's just too many here uh, when it comes down to it. And they're beautiful. And you can customize them all, of course. Uh, there's some great ones in here. There's changeable one there. Like, look at all these options. Tennessee State Trooper. I love that. <laughs> uh, TMC out of Des Moines right there. You have some uh, stripes there. All sorts of different ones. And there we are right there. Okay. 
And I like that one a lot too. But anywho, lots of paint options here when it boils down to it. Uh, we'll keep it on that one for now. So let's go ahead and show you the accessories because this is where she shines, man. There's so much customization here. You'll even have to go into your little walking mode so you can walk up to it. And this is something that I really wish SES would just give us. Give us the walking mode like this where you have this and then you can just walk around up to the truck with the WASD keys. It would be so perfect. And then let us, you know, hook up airlines and stuff like that. They just need to give us something like that. And they haven't yet. So at the bottom here, let's start off with this. So you have all your plate options here. Lots of options for the plates. Then you move up here. And now we are into the bumpers. Now there's a couple bumpers. We'll take it off of that. There's a couple bumpers here that have options for custom lights at the bottom. Not a whole lot really when it comes to it. But you have all of these now. Another thing you're going to see is 12 GA Customs 20-inch Texas drop bumper on this thing. These are based off of the actual Chrome Shop mods like in real life, basically. Any of the additions that you can think of that you see in here. You have Valley Chrome options here, and they are to spec of the real thing. Like That is the biggest thing about this truck is if you're a hardcore into America Truck Simulator, and especially Peterbilt Trucks, it's going to be hard to not want to get this truck and shell out the money for it. Like, honestly, there's so much here to choose from. Valley Chrome's all in here. The whole catalog is here for you. If you want to use those Texas bumper, of course, you have the big boy option if you want that. Now, moving up here, we've got the options for the oversized load, or you have an oversized load Canada option if you want that. Now... We have the stock Peterbilt fender mounts. You can take those off if you'd like. Uh, or actually, no, you can't take those off. Those are by, they're on there by default. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have the options here for this. Now, these are your headlight options. And you've got stock shaved paint. You've got stock shaved. You can just shave all those. You got a stock look on it. 359 square chrome headlights. 359 square paint headlights. Then moving into the old style round doubles, I uh, have the singles here. I love this look. It's such a great look for the 379 with the, the little eyelids on it too. I have a truck in my uh, repertoire that has that single round headlights if you want that look. And you can have the little visor on those as well. Single round headlights with a blinker if you want the blinker on top there. Then you have the blinker visor option. And those are your headlight options. So quite a few there to make this truck, you know, what you want it to be. And I think that's just so cool. I like the single style on that. Now, moving on, stock Peterbilt. You have the grill surround. That's that in there, and it's on there by default. You can't remove it. Moving on, here are your options for this. Now, we're going to get into walking mode and walk up to the truck so you can see the actual modeling that was done on these grills. It's pretty crazy. Old OEM mesh, you have an old radiator style grill stamp mesh. Then you have a standard chrome. You have a winter front option on it. You can get a wild, we know those, the teeth. The custom 379 look there. Uh, blue line mesh, really cool one. It's got blue line modding's logo there, and it looks pretty darn cool. Then you have the oval mesh option as well if you want that. But few options here when it comes to that, and I like to see that. Now, you have the option to change out the hood logos. You can do the Indian feather style. You have the old style Peterbilt logo if you want that as well. Up here on the top, you have a duck option, flying pig. You do the stock or the swan. I was using the stock today. That's what we had. Over here, you have the stock Peterbilt front fender. Again, these are things you can take off if you want. I don't know why you would want to do that. Keep them on there. Over here on the right hand side, you can put left hood mirror on if you want. Put here hood mirrors. You can. Let's go ahead and get out of walking mode here and go up here. So up here we have options for the uh, chrome hood trim options. You can paint the, the trim if you want. Over here on the right, you can change out the logos. You have a logo with a flag. There's so much. It took me one hour to the truck that you saw. It took me like an hour to actually make it. Put warning flags out here if you would like. Of course, you have options here to change out your different uh, wheel sets and stuff. And he sent me his Alcoa pack, which is really cool. Over here on the right-hand side, you've got the options for tons of stuff here. Let's get up here. These are interior stuff. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Now you can adjust that 
Uh, so you can adjust the different look of the interior from the outside when it comes to matching the paint and all that stuff. So we'll get to that in a second. Sun visor options. You have 12 GA reverse bow tie. Uh, a lot of options here. Bow tie, uh, uh, you know, I'm not huge into those, but if you are, here they all are. And then Peterbilt bow tie visor and sun shield. If you want that, we'll keep it on that for now. Over here on the right hand side, interior stuff, of course, moving on, moving on. Cabin lights, put that up there as the light adapter. You can change those out if you'd like. Put horns on it if you want. Then you have the option to change this out. You got chrome and paint and all that stuff. You got paint. These are these little trim options here because it's back here on the on the back. Uh, lots of dots here to choose from. And that's what you want to see. Well, we'll get to that. That's interior stuff again. Oops. Uh, nope, 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 nope. We have, uh, yep, that's all still interior stuff. Here's your options for Beacon Heavy. You can do Beacon Low. You can do Beacon Ultra. You can do, which is crazy. You throw your double radiance on there if you would like to. But with a Beacon Ultra, you have this one. You can throw your Beacon Lights on there if you would like. If you have different SISL packs and whatnot. Uh, double radiant if you wanted that. I'm not uh, really big into those personally, so I don't really care about that. Stacks look really cool, though. Up here, you have a side spoiler option. Obviously, side spoiler with a turbo wing and a turbo wing FT if you wanted that option. There you go. So, so many options to choose from. We're not going to cover all of it. I can guarantee you that. I'm just trying to get through all this. Now, with the air filters, you can change out the lights on here in the front. Now, you can get ones that have slots in the front. You can have ones without it. You can change out the old style ones. You can do painted on it. You can do that. I like the painted air filters with the slots. It looks really nice. Uh, you have the old style ones. And then, like right there, you can see. And then air filters with lights paint. A lot of options there when it comes to all that stuff. If you would like it, heavy-duty ones as well, which look really interesting for sure. Um, but moving on, you take them off, put them back on. I don't know why you would want to do that. But hey, you know what? The option is there for you. Down here, uh, that's that stock plate. Uh, diamond plate toolbox options here uh, for all the front step stuff. If you want to do that, you certainly can. Here, fuel tank options, lots of those to choose from. You have uh, some end paint and paint, all options there. And then you have to put on these separately. Well, that's the frame, sorry. Uh, there's the actual tank straps you have to put on separately. There they are right here. So you have options for the tank straps. Lots of stuff here for sure. Uh, this is your side options for the chrome panel slots. You can have that old classic style deep side panel on it. You can have the side uh, panel with chrome slots, paint and chrome. Lots of options here for that stuff. Moving up here, cab decals. If you want them, you can have them. Cab decals too. These are all ones you can do if you want. Um, there's the blue line one right there. Uh, Black dog info right there on the side. You can customize it. Lots of stuff there. Interior stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. Still on the airline box, that's what I have right now. You can do a rear, you can do a rear 265. There's so many options here with this stuff. Standard and the standard 48 option as well. And then we have options here for the back plate deck lid where you want it at. You can move it around. You can put a toolbox in there if you'd like. Down here, you have billet light brackets. So you can put a light bracket down there. That's what those are right there. And you can take them off. You have options for the side steps, diamond plate, rear step. You can put a Carrier Comfort Pro on there. Lots of options with that. As far as the look of it, low bed frame or frame, you've got options up here. It's going to be so hard to get to all this unless we do it in the actual thing. Side spoiler. Yeah, I was looking for the, the actual... Nope. Looking for the stacks. Here they are. Short miters. Here's all your stack options and quite a few of them here. You got stock all the way down and you can add those there. You got muffler shield custom muffler shield. You've got 45 turnouts, 45 turnout shorts. You have the 90s straight back or the turns all the way down, 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 down. Uh, short miters. Then you have tall 90s. Look at that thing. Absolutely insane. Back shorts. You have the heat shields and muffler shields. Now here, this is where you get these little options here to change out the different tops so you can have that and then just change out what you want on those i really like that option for that so you choose you know what you want to have and then you just change it out based on that which i think is really nice for doing that i have to find them again kind of 
being a pain in the butt to find it all here. Then you have Dynaflex Custom 7 inch, 45 out, Dynaflex Slash Cut 7 inch, 45 outs. A lot of options when it comes to the exhaust on this thing. That is pretty darn slick looking. That looks ridiculous, but we'll uh, we'll just do that. There we go, 45 turnouts. That works for me. Uh, moving towards the back, you have options here to change all this stuff out. You have steel hanger with Peterbilt mud flaps. A lot of options here with this stuff. Then we have the back itself, which you have stock Peterbilt taillights, OEM style ones, frame ramp taillights. Then you have this option here to change all this stuff up. So you have uh, GA Customs, drop light all panels, all this stuff based on the real options by those companies. Pretty darn cool stuff there if you want to do that. And up here you have the options to change out these from a classic style to a 2006 style. If you want to have that kind of mirror, uh, classic single styles, 12 GAs, 12 GA singles custom. So you have options when it comes to all that stuff. Pretty darn cool when it comes down to it. Uh, like I said, there's just so much here to show. I don't think I'm gonna have enough time to do it in today's video. But if you could pick up this truck, you're you're just gonna sit here and spend so much time working on this thing. You really, really are. It's pretty crazy. Let's head into the interior. Here's the interior when you load in. Like I said, you have a lot of missing textures and that is because it's all custom customizable. So you have interior upper pad black, you do blue, dark gray, dark tan, all these options here for different colors for that stuff, which is really neat. Let's do like a, let's do that um, tan because we have that, you know, yellow in there. Up here, you have options for your ambient lights from SISL. I'm, I don't use those. I use this one here, which are the custom lights you have as options to change custom blue, cyan, green, and these are all turned on by your beacon at night, which is pretty cool. Let's do with orange. That's kind of neat looking. Over here on the right hand side, here's your interior upper pad. You can change all these colors. Well, we just did that one, sorry. Uh, where's it at? Right over here. No, we have that one. Here's your options for the actual CB. Now this is currently not animated, so keep that in mind. However, the attention to detail is so crazy on these things, I mean, really well done. So if you want to have that CB, you can, then you have options. There's where you can change out these visors and all that stuff. And there's so many options for that. You can even do textures on some of them as well. Let's go back up to the top on that one. There we go over here to the right. We have the options for the GPS. So you have it on the windshield, you can have it on the bottom left, or you can have it up there, which is pretty cool as far as options goes for that. Then over here, you can change out PDI big boss performance tuner option or the tuner gauges, if you want to have those. Over here, you can have your TomTom Tom Trucker. That's SISL stuff, obviously. Then we have your GPS projector. But what, these are all SISL stuff. Um, moving on, I'm just doing his stuff. So here we go. You have the full catalog to change out things from Rockwood on the interior of this truck. So you have OEM wood you can have there. Paints if you want it. Rockwood Blue Blair, uh, Blueberry Blitz. Man, that's a tongue twister. Colorado Copper to Dark Plum. Deep blue sea, fired up, forest green. You've got French vanilla, get ready. That's the one I was using today. Gold dust, green envy, gun metal, hint of red, midnight blue, orange crush, orange splash, purple passion, rosewood, and royal purple. Then you have ruby red, stormy sky, teak wood, vision in red, white out. All of those options from Rockwood are here at your feet pretty crazy stuff isn't it just a little bit just a tad i'm gonna go with a french vanilla no i, I know which one i want to have the gold yeah we'll do the gold dust just so i can show you what options there are wheels you have the pit leather classic you have a four spoke wood options here paints ivory moving on to three spoke options here these are all with the truck and then i'm showing you other ones here that you had from SISL and all the others, but uh, that one works there. You have options with all that stuff. Pretty darn cool that you have it. Now down here, you have the Peterbilt floor mats if you want them. You have options to change out the custom shifters. Now, if you had a animated shifter, you couldn't change out the options that you have here. So here are the options with the shifters. 10 speed, 13 speed, 15, 18. You have the Bully 10, Bully 13, Bully 15, Bully 18, Bully Chrome speed. And you have the custom 10, custom 10 speed extension on it, custom 13, custom 13, custom 15, custom extended all the way down, customs, 
And then you get into the double sticks. Well, we're going to get in here in a second. There we go. Yep. Lots of options here for these. There we go. There's a, a custom plunger valve style. Then you have the default shifter twin stick option. Those are the ones that you can choose from. Chrome shift tower or a stock shift tower there if you would like it. Moving on over here, like I said, you can, you know, we, we went with the gold dust option from Rockwood. You can do the same thing over here so we can come down and get gold dust and throw it on there as well. So bam, just like that. And you can do the same thing over there. There we go. Moving on options here for the seats. That's I say I sell stuff, but here are the different seats. You have blue seats, dark gray, dark tan. You have light gray, light tan, and red options for those. We can do a light. Let's just do the uh, dark tan. That's what we were working with there. And it kind of matches for sure. Over here, you have options for your interior door. There's dark gray. You have blue, dark tan, uh, light gray, light tan. You know, we can match that as well. Up here, you can change the interior armrests to different colors as well. Like, it's all here. It is all here. Anything you think of, the pillars can be changed out colors too. <laughs> so many things to choose from here. You have this option for a chrome side mirror if you'd like. There's your mirror options there. Moving on back here, we have the options for the interior lower panel, blue, gray. This is all this stuff here. You can go with white on that one uh, or light gray. Pretty darn cool when it comes to all of this stuff. You can just kind of make it whatever you want it to be. Down here, you see that's missing. You're going to have to put the the boot ring black, blue, whatever you want it to be, dark tan, light tan, light gray, light tan, whatever you want it to be. We'll go with white or light gray on that one. We'll have to get in the back here in a second when we get to that part. But here, you have, oh, we went, uh, yep, we're going to get back there in a second. Here on the floor, uh, here it is right here. You can out, change out these different colors for the bed, which is cool. A lot more options than what STS gives you for their beds. So I do like to see that indeed. There's that. So let's come back here to the back and start customizing back here. So uh, custom lights there. Here we are. You have this option here for the interior plastic, blue, gray, whatever you want it to be. Light gray is what we want going with on that one. Then you have your different ones here for this little edge thing. And we're going to do the what we did before, which is the gold dust there. So it matches up there. Pretty cool. Over here, you have options for the different trims. Back here, you can change this out, uh, the vent, for certain colors that you would like as well. Pretty darn cool. And then you have options up over here to change out this trim here, if you'd like. Like right there, you can change out this little back, have a chrome visor or turn it off if you'd like. Um, where else? Over here. We're good. Come back here and around. All right, we're awesome. Yeah, I think we have covered most of all of it, if not... Uh, you know, I'm just not, I'm just going to probably miss some things here, but there are options galore when it comes to the interior of this truck. So I'm sure I didn't do it justice and I didn't show you everything there is to do with this truck, but there's so many options that we just don't have enough time to go over them. You can check out the truck in the description below. Highly recommend it. I know it's $70, but man, when it comes down to a mod for America Truck Sim, this is the best payware I've ever used. I, I can hands down say that and I give it my seal of approval if that means something to you as well. Anywho, that's going to do it for this long video of America Truck Simulator. Let me know what you thought of the truck and the video. I will see you all next time. Take care. Just want to let you guys know that uh, merch is available if you check out the link in the description below and uh, there should be some images you can click on below the video as well. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support. I do appreciate it.